to everybody um good morning hoping that everyone is having a terrific thursday oh boy why are you pushing the week y you had such a wonderful monday you have to push it all the way to thursday mr gums <laughs> i'm hoping <laughs> that everyone has a terrific tuesday i wonder <laughs> i wonder what azad is running from this lovely <laughs> tuesday what challenge <laughs> he hopes to get over so quickly that he can get to thursday you Good know morning. it's a terrific tuesday terrific thursday so it's a tongue twister you know no I we know. have to we can't have two terrifics so okay. we have to find something mm. for thursday it's marvelous monday terrific mm. tuesday yeah. hump day wednesday well i like to say wonderful wednesday wonderful wednesday okay mm. Or whimsical, or yeah, we got a lot. I but we, we're gonna work on I Thursday. I like to play on the T's, do the uh, the alliteration, <laughs> you know. Alrighty, yes. and Friday <laughs> is just Friday. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. The week is Fantastic done. Fantastic Friday. Fantastic Friday. Fantastic okay. Friday. So how are, how have you been? Good, good. Yourself? Ah, quite busy, but still, you know, being busy is good. You know, you not all the time. Yes, not all, but at least it gets yeah, at least. Being productive. Yeah. Yes, being productive. I mean productive. <laughs> so yeah, indeed. Yes, yes. So let me say that uh, a wonderful morning to everybody who's listening to us, everybody who's viewing. I trust that you have had a, a marvelous Monday and you're ready for your terrific Tuesday. Yeah. And so we're here on Island T. As I do want to remind them where they mm -hmm. can uh, view us on and listen us on. Of course. They can view us on Facebook, WinFM Media, SKN, uh, the Facebook page. You could also follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter. You know, they could also look at the media page, as in the website, mm -hmm. WinFM Media. SKN.com or just if you can't remember that just put www.winfm.com yep. and also they can view us on channel 40 yeah and you forgot Facebook oh I said Facebook <laughs> oh yes. you said Facebook mm -hmm. okay yes, alright just making sure we yes. have all the media outlets and you can listen to us on 98.9 that's yes, our on radio. radio dial yes of mm. course and so there are a number of things that I see happening so it seems here that of course. Sad news. Yeah. Oh. You heard about it. Yeah. I think a lot of persons heard about yeah. it. Yeah. So <laughs> yesterday we recorded our ninth homicide. You it's know. It's just the fourth yeah. month. Yeah, so it's our ninth homicide. And I two persons based on the report it seemed like two persons were shot, one died, one sustained injuries so it is uh, very we're on the heel of uh you know there is a there has been uh, another murder just yesterday and so you know sympathies to the family uh, it cannot be easy it cannot be easy at all no, sympathy yeah. not only to the family of the person that lost their life, Azad, but sympathy to the family of the perpetrators once caught because whether it's a young man, whether it's a young woman, those will be um, people that n will now be lost from society. They won't Maybe they can contribute meaningfully somehow from w the prison, mm. but what much can they do? And if it's, it, let's, let's just presume that it's just young men, we've lost another set. And that's not good. Mm -hmm. hmm. Indeed. So, uh, looking 
at you know the situation of course crime is an issue that you know our country faces it's an issue that you know different countries face and it's an issue that we all face <laughs> and i just you know don't wish for us to become numb due to the constant murders that we just see it as another day, you know? Yeah. Wow. So I'm looking at this article as well, and it says, new parts procured for Liat 2020 after faulty landing gear discovered. So this is Loop News, and it says, following reports of faulty landing gear discovered during uh, test flights of a recent acquired Leia 2020 aircraft, officials have moved quickly to purchase new parts. Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brown, confirmed the reports over the weekend but assured that the new parts have been sourced. This is a quote. It says, last weekend, they did some test flights, and I am told that the plane had to change the landing gear and the engine. I believe one part of it came in this week, and another part is supposed to come on Tuesday. So from next week, they will continue those test flights as the ECCAA review those various manuals. Hope We're hoping they can expedite them and they can complete within the next couple of weeks, he said, end of quote. This seemed to be a quote from the Prime Minister, Gaston Brown. And he said, and so that's what he said. The article goes on to say that the airline must undergo this process to obtain its air operator's certificate before commencing regular scheduled flights. Additionally, Brown acknowledged that the other two aircrafts, that the other two aircraft the government seek to purchase from the Caribbean Development Bank will also require extensive repairs before they are deemed airworthy. Mm -hmm. mm. I like that. You see, Lias has a great safety record, and the fact mm -hmm. that they're taking the time to ensure that everything is good before they hmm. accept passengers. Kudos to my favorite airline. Yeah. Don't know about JAMSA, but kudos to my favorite airline. And also, too, you look at this, and it is, I mean, look at, oh, wow. I'm going to just think about they had to change the landing gear and the engine. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. You know, it's good that they're doing the test runs, but, you know, it's required. But it's good that they're seeing all of these now. So, you know, everything goes well in the future. But as that we speak about the deaths that we just have, and it says autopsy reports returned for seven and eight homicide victims. And this is a article from Wynn Media. Mm -hmm. From com, and it's by Yolanda Weeks. It said, sink it to Nevis. Um... When 33-year-old Challenges resident Alex Harris received trauma to the complete section of the brain stem due to a gunshot wound to the head, the findings were revealed by the Royal St. Christopher Nevis Police Force following an April 12th mm -hmm. autopsy. Harris was approached and shot by an armed assailant while seated outside the Basir Ferry Terminal on the night of April 6th. He was pronounced dead at the scene. So less than three hours later, mm -hmm. on April the 7th, 37-year-old um, Rashil James was accosted and shot by an armed assailant at a bar in Parsons Village. He was fatally wounded. An autopsy was performed on the Middle Island residence on April 12th. A report revealed that James received severe cranio cranio C phallatic drama due to a gunshot wound to the head. Wow. Both autopsies were conducted by resident pathologist Dr. Adrian Nunes and Dr. Nodicia Phillip. And as you said, those were the seventh and the eighth, and now we have our night. Oh boy. That's that's <coughs> that's sad. Yeah, it is. It really is. It's very sad. sad. Wow. We, we have a call. Caller, you're live on Island T. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Yes. Um I think Gaston Brown have some egg on his face. I mean, wasn't it a, a few days ago he was <laughs> criticizing in the Caribbean for um, the fact that they had some mishaps? 
as yeah. well. Yes, Mr. McMahon, but guess what? He's making sure that his mishaps are sorted before he transport passengers. Uh, yeah, but mm -hmm. the fact is, Inter-Caribbean is already um, has the awardiness certificate, and, and so obviously things, things will happen. Mm -hmm. at, at least it was dealt with. Yeah. Um, it's not like uh, their planes never had issues before while they were flying. It's, it, it's how they are dealt with. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so um, in this particular case, um, we have a startup. Um, <laughs> it, it seems, well, first of all, the planes aren't new. No. And that in itself would be a cause, a cause for concern. So, yes, he has to deal quickly <laughs> with it. But mm -hmm. I think what that tells us, too, is that I, I, I think um, the, the region is going about um, solving the air transport issue in the wrong way. Okay. There are too many players now. Um, obviously, some of them are going to fail. Um, we should guard against anybody cutting corners to make themselves um, more competitive. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that there needs to be a meeting of the mind, mind as to the routes, um, the, the, the airlines that's going to operate, um, you know, things like that where they're going to operate, things like that. Because um, this is, I think this is too much now, too many now. I mean, the, the conventional wisdom is that the more you have, um, the merrier. That, that, that's not true, I, do, I don't think, in the airline industry. Um, the, 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 the more you have, uh, and the, the, the saying that the more you have, um, the more competition you have, the prices will go down. Mm -hmm. We don't want the prices to go down and, and safety and so on be sacrificed. So there needs, uh, there has to be some meeting of the minds on the best way forward with the with, with regards to air transport in the in, in the region. And okay. um, I don't think the 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 body is considering that yet. It's, it's too much of a free for all, I think. Um, with regards to the, the crime thing, huh? I don't think that we we are approaching this right either. In the sense that it seems as if. As each go government goes in, they want to claim success for solving the problem, mm -hmm. okay? And you see, that's why you see if there's a lull, you know, somebody comes out and starts blowing a trumpet. I don't think that's the way to go. Crime is one of those issues that have to be dealt with by everybody. And so there should be, uh, and, uh, there should be evidence of a partnership with government, and opposition forces so that they speak with one voice. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have this um, opposition criticizing the government for the response to crime or vice versa, right? It should be one voice against criminal activity. Mm -hmm. And so far, we have not had that. We have governments going in there, including the current one, wanting to do things just be away and hoping that it works. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, it's obviously not working that way. So they should try something different. And I'm saying that um, they should try an all-inclusive approach so that it seems as if it's the whole country, government and opposition, against this criminal activity. And not Mr. Matt, well, how picking, is picking one up. Hello? It's, it's, glad, it's good that you raised that point because the People's Action Movement recently um, wrote to Prime Minister Drew indicating um, a sit-down meeting with the Prime Minister and members of their national executive to speak about the Elevate program. That was something that the People's Action Movement spoke about on its Facebook page. Did you get a response? Well, check our Facebook page. We received a response from... Um, the permanent secretary in the minister's office of the prime minister, the permanent secretary dealing with um, the Elevate program, um, mm. Naima Hazel, and that was something that we spoke about. If you check our Facebook page. Well, okay, uh, but, but you, can tell the, you can tell the audience, um, was it a positive thing? What, did they agree to sit down with you all? Well, the letter first, the response was just to sit down with myself as a chairman. Uh, I took that back to the national executive. We felt that, you know, more persons, the more persons from the executive should be a part of that. And 
the letter. Let me see. Let me try to let me try to read the letter. Hold on there. Since you I mean you brought it up with the issue, but I'm just saying that the opposition too has been um, trying is not for lack of trying. Okay, and fine. Uh, do, do you get the impression that uh, though that um, you're going to be accommodated in terms of this? That, that's what we want to hear. <laughs> it did, it did. be some kind of. It, I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> frankly, if 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 it were me, uh, um, if mm -hmm. the permanent secretary mm -hmm. asks for a meeting with the chairman, that's that's a good start. When you have that meeting, well, then you the, can talk the, about widening the, the, the scope of yes. I'll, everything I'll, going forward. But at least, you know, somebody should call somebody else's bluff, um, meet and establish the sincerity of the effort in, in solving this problem, in dealing with this problem. Yes, let me read the letter, the response, because I'd, I'd like to be factual. I don't like answer. It's for your interpretation. And it says, I hope you are well and enjoy your vacation. It has been several months since your initial request, and I, in fact, thought that you may have withdrawn your request, so it's nice to hear from you. For clarification, I do recall the meeting was requested in relation to the alternate life um, path program administered under the previous PLP PAM administration and the Elevate program administrated under the current government administration. Please note that since your request, there have been several public interviews and stories related to Elevate, including a one-hour program on SKNIS in focus, which addressed most, if not all, of your previous questions and distinguished the difference between the two programs. However, notably, in the spirit of transparency and accountability which guides our administration, should you still have further questions and still feel a meeting is required to address them, feel free to forward them. Additionally, we have now had an opportunity to thoroughly audit the ALPP program under the previous administration. There are concerns, questions we would like to, uh, for you to address as well, specifically in relation to the ALPP's financial and administrative management, intended mandates, goals and objectives, outputs and outcomes, as well as its monitoring and evaluative process or lack thereof. This will help me to gain a better understanding of its management under the People's Action Movement as you identify your role and responsibility in the initial correspondence. While I am unaware of any precedent where such a meeting between a political party and government entity of this nature has ever occurred, it is out of respect of our personal relationship of over 20 years that I initially agreed to meet with you as a representative of your party, the People's Action Movement. The follow-up request for full executive to attend the meeting in light was not agreed. Therefore, we should assume that the new request is the counter compromise your executive wishes to extend. To this end, please forward the name and purpose in terms of the ability and willingness to answer the questions related to the ALPP program of the requested additional executive member for review and a decision as to the way forward. And says, kind regards, Naima Hazel, Permanent Secretary, Prime Minister. Uh, you know, I, 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 I dislike intensely those kind of um, long-winded um, bureaucratic um, diplomatic responses. The, 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 the point is you need to have a meeting, a meeting with all the stakeholders concerned. And I agree it should be as, as wide as possible, right? Mm -hmm. And what, what she asked for uh, are, are actually relevant as well. What I'm saying is the first thing is to not try to, to um, settle this over let back and let us back and forth. Now, to me, that's ridiculous and time wasting, right? Get a meeting going where these things and they are relevant, like I said, are, are, are discussed at a meeting. Okay, um, not not uh, this thing is is too important to be dealt with with the kind of bureaucratic um, letter writing and and um, that that we normally have and and. You know, trying to score points. You know, there was a, there, there a program before, and yes, it, it needs to, I suppose, some kind of assessment needed to have been done, and there are answers that should have been forthcoming. And by the way, um, the opposition leader was part of the government before as well. So you would think that, bearing in mind the <laughs> new rapport between the government and the opposition leader now, 
that some of those questions might, might have been addressed to him as well. The, the point is, right, this thing is too important to be left to, you know, even one or two individuals. I, I can't imagine what a meeting between one person in a political party and the permanent secretary is going to how that's going to carry the, the, the process forward. And that's why we had right. suggested um, members of the national executive, because the national executive would include also our current political leader, um, the Honorable Sean Richards, who would have been a part of the program. It also has the Honorable John L. Powell, who is the current deputy political leader. It also has Natasha Grace, who is the current deputy political leader. It has a number of persons who come... Yeah, but it doesn't have, it doesn't mm -hmm. have let's say, PLP people either. Right, but well, that's what I'm saying. It, mm -hmm. it should not be a well. We 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 took the we took the initiative, Mr. McMahon. Yeah, we took the initiative. The invitation was not extended to us. In fact, we wrote to them, indicating that the number of homicides have increased. We realized that in 2023 it has been it was 31, if I'm not mistaken, and at, uh, we wrote the letter in January. We I, I personally went over there from my office to government headquarters, up the stairs to the Prime Minister's office and delivered it. And we awaited a response, a response was given, but the response was just to have one person initially, then that's just me. Uh, but, but, but as a, yes. um, it, it, what it, that sounds like, and it seems like what they, they took it as, mm -hmm. was an attempt by Pam to score cheap political points by you know, suggesting, taking initiative, suggesting this meeting, if you had done it in terms of, let's say, naming other stakeholders, suggesting a meeting with other stakeholders, but Mr. not McMahon, just, um, the people Mr. Actually, McMahon, we could only we could received. only suggest based on our platform. We could only we are no, saying no, as no, a no, 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 no. But, but, but your platform, if you believe in an all-inclusive approach but, to this um, solving crime, but Mr. McMahon, let, uh, you, let me you let, should let, you sh in, in in your communication with them, you should indicate that. And suggest the widening of, of, of the stakeholder group. Mr. Well. McMahon, we suggested, yeah. let me say, we saw the issue at hand. We saw the number of homicides escalating. We have heard persons like yourself come on and and, and, yeah, and say that um, the party, the opposition, just seemed to oppose, oppose. We saw the opportunity to extend ourselves to the government to offer some sort of solution. The government, at the end of the day, is the <laughs> operating of the, the program right now. And of course, if the government had said to us, okay then, people's action movement, you indicate their interest, we would also like other stakeholders to be there, well, then we would not have objected to that. But we are okay. saying, we are saying as a party that we have seen what, has ha what is happening, and that instead of just opposing for opposing sake, we're going to say we're going to bring, we're going to come to the people who control the program, who has the resources, and we're going to say how can we be a part of the solution? That's all. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. But uh, like like we always say, it's not what you do; it's how you do it. And how did and we do it, Mr. McMahon? I'm sure as a, did you, as do you want me to you read the letter? You would have anticipated this kind of response from 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 the government. And what I'm saying is, if you really want the process to go forward. Right? You should have couched it in, in, in terms that are acceptable to, as you point out, the administrators of did the you, program. Did you, like, did no, you, you, did you, know you did you, did right? you, did you, did you, did you, wait, wait, Mr. Solution. McMahon. You don't want ops, photo ops and What um, photo ops? The letter and, was and written in January. You only know the letter in April. What photo ops is not a... It's not a situation where it was taken as a photo op. The letter was written, and I, and, and I walked over there on the 18th of January, or the, uh, maybe 18th or the 19th, I can't remember, but, the, but the, eight, the, eight, the letter is dated the 18th. I walked over there, not with no pictures. After walking over there, there was no mention of it on our Facebook page or any media platform. I come here every day to speak on the air. I never mentioned that letter. You understand? Okay. I but awaited yeah. a response. We have been in discussion, and it's only until April does um, is, is the public aware that a letter was written. It was okay. not and meant. And really and truly, um, it's good that it was done. You know, um, in, in in that kind of confidentiality initially, okay. Um, but but 
we should not keep our eyes off the ball. The ball should be uh, moving forward, and we should choose the best method on moving that ball and we, forward. And we, okay? have, we have extended ourselves. We have said, how can the people's action movement help? Okay. And we still waiting right. on the decision. And so, yeah, um, fair enough. Um, those those in, the lead, in, in leadership now should take that and run with it and call the People's Action Movement bluff. Um, not just to call it bluff, but to try, really try and make you it see, an You see how you're calling this a bluff? In Calvin, in Calvin you are the, insinuating the that this was done with ulterior motives. Without reading the letter in which, we, without having read the letter in which we we we, we delivered, and I'm, I'm, I'm without not otherwise, that it was done without uh, ulterior motives. But but that's what but you said. And I'm telling you that the environment that we have right now, where everybody is trying to score political points, and everybody is trying to claim credit. So Whatever let me success. ask you. Let me ask yeah, you a question. People always claim so for success so and if so if the People's Action Movement had not written, had not done anything about the in, uh, well, try to do anything about the crime situation in seeking an audience with the government, then you would have said, well, all they do is criticize, criticize, criticize. So you know what it makes it. it right. So, so, so that is good. That's what, uh, that's what I'm saying. But instead it's of saying that the step, approach is but good. You want, but, but as I said, you want whatever steps you take to be successful. You don't want, want it to be become just a back and forth letter writing kind of thing. But you want but you how, to get together. How can it be agree on concrete steps to solve the problem? But you are you are I'm not but you are here. I'm telling you that we approach them. I'm telling you that we wrote to them. I'm telling you that we are asking for an audience. I'm telling you that the only um arm of the two which is seem which seem hesitant about an audience is the government. And then, you, but you're still so, saying so, so that it is the people's you action then movement. Get other, get other stakeholders to support you in this venture. That I think right? other it, it stakeholders would like less, who? It, it would have been it other would, stakeholders it, the like who? Would probably been less, would have been less reluctant if we. If it was not just the people's action movement, but other but why should they be well. less? Why, but why should they be reluctant at all? This is a, the well, people's you, action you, movement. You know the, the, our political environment. But we are talking that, that, about and, and agree, political maturity. Okay, that, okay, I don't want to be like uh, the stern uh, head I'm teacher the now. Uh, hey, you too. Stop it. Right? <laughs> the fact that we... we, we, we we still, Another segment, Mr. Um, Matt yeah. There is no change in the way but Mr. government Mahan, operates. We probably I, need a change in I the way government operates. I would think that you would say the government ought to have open arm... With, with open arms, accepted the invitation by the People's Action yeah, Movement. That is what okay, I think guys. Really should have. Okay, but it's what, a I'm, what I'm saying is you should know who you're dealing with. And, and, and you're um, saying that they're not mature your, enough your to sit at the table? To suit you're because saying they're not mature people, enough? Okay, Mac. It's okay, it's, it's 8.30. Okay, um, okay. No. okay. We got to shut it down here. Yeah. Um, okay, so we got starting we have to this end, week. yes. <laughs> so... Starting this very week. interesting discussion. So yeah. I'm I'm also going to take my leave now because I have to go. So I we our next segment is me, is weekly dose with Dr. Natalie Osborne. So guys, we're going to take a break. <laughs> WINN is 98.9. 98.9 is Win FM. Feeling lucky? Your winning streak starts now with the Pick 3 and Pick 4 Mega Ball Bonanza. That's right. Pick your lucky numbers in Pick 3 or Pick 4, then grab all five boards and add the Mega Ball to at least one. Bam! You've instantly got yourself a free $1 ticket. That's five chances to win big, plus a guaranteed $1 win just for playing the Mega Ball way. So grab your Pick 3 and Pick 4 play slips today at Caribbean Lottery Agents Island wide. Must be 21 and over to play. Here are your horses Value Mart IGA Special. Running April 4 to April 17. Now our Value Club Blue Tag Specials. Essential everyday canned vegetables, just $3.99. Mueller's pasta, $5.99. 
Essential Everyday Single Sliced Cheese, $8.99. Banquet Chicken Tenders and Nuggets, $25.99. Essential Everyday Ground Coffee, $27.99. Essential Everyday Freezer Bags, just $8.99. And now, our very low weekly... Value Deals! General Mills Cereals, Cinnamon Toast, Lucky Chubs, Cocoa Puff, $13.99. Ocean Spec Cranberry Drinks, $12.99. Drago Pasta Sauce, $11.99. Old Orchard 100% Apple Juice, $9.99. North Side Dishes, $7.99. Equal Eye Mouthwash, $10.99. Shop Smart, Shop Value Mart, tell them in Spanish. Sea listo y haga sus compras aquí en Value Mart. Well, it's 8.32, and uh, starting today, uh, weekly dose will be at 8.30 instead of 9 o'clock as normal. And we've got the good doctor. Yeah, she's in the house, she's in the house, and today... And the good K. <laughs> on, on, on. <laughs> today we're going to be speaking about lumps in the neck. So oh. go tell a friend to tell uh, your friend <laughs> that uh, the lovely doctor, Natalie Osborne, is on right here on weekly do so doc i give i said what we're gonna talk about so let's dive right into it this okay, morning okay good morning all right so we're gonna be talking about i usually try to find a way to get inspiration for these weekly topics okay. of course and so i had a case um last week with a thyroid of the neck, okay? okay? So that's what prompted this, because believe it or not, every week to come up with fresh, interesting ideas, mm -hmm. it's somewhat um, tough, because you're trying mm -hmm. to be inspirational, you want to want to make sure that you're informative and that persons are learning as much as possible. So we're gonna be talking about um, lumps or masses in the neck, okay? They can be large, they can be smaller, Uh huh. they can be painful, they can be non-painful, but most of these lumps are, aren't harmful. Most of them are benign or non-cancerous. But a neck lump can also be a sign of a, a serious condition, like a severe infection or uh, a cancer. All right, so we're gonna delve into it today. So before we go on, you said a severe infection. What can be a severe infection? Because we, we know, everybody knows the word cancer, but what type of severe infection? Yeah, you can have an abscess of, uh, you can have an infection in the tonsils that leads to an abscess. Mm -hmm. We call it a peritonsillar abscess. Those are things that we consider um, severe infections. Okay, so mm -hmm. our first question for today, where do neck masses originate or come from? Okay, excellent question. So where the lump originates from plays a very important role in determining what it is. The neck is a very important and vital structure. So it communicates a lot of uh, um, information from the brain, from the head, downwards to the rest of the body. So many structures pass through there. So you've got the skin. You've got the fat that underlays that. You've got muscles. Okay, you've got several different organs and structures. You have blood vessels, you've got nerves running there. You have an important uh, gland that is in the anterior aspect of the neck that is called the thyroid gland, all right? And you have things like the windpipe or the trachea yeah. or the voice box or the larynx. These are important structures that go by there, okay? And you also have the bones where the spinal cord passes through. Mm -hmm. So you can have a lump that originate from any of these structures, to be honest. So any of these, so some more frequent than the other. You have salivary glands there as well or close to that area. And so then you can have a lump that originates from any of these structures. Mm. Oh, boy. So what are some of the conditions that cause a neck mass? So yes, as we said that they can originate from any structure, most of the structure, we can start talking about it from outside in or from the skin. So you could have a cyst on the skin there. That's just a small um, lesion. It mm -hmm. could be filled with kind of creamy, gunky, greasy Us. stuff when, when, the, when the glands 
in the skin becomes blocked, so it becomes inflamed, mm -hmm. and that could become infected secondary and have some pus in, in it, mm -hmm. all right? You can have a lipoma. What is a lipoma? It's like a capsulated fatty bulge, and oftentimes people would have them. You can have them on the neck, you can have them on the back, on the chest, okay? They're quite common in this skin. You can have an infection in the tonsils. You know, once you open your mouth, you can see those um, tonsils there. Mm -hmm. We call them the palatine tonsils. They can get infected quite commonly, especially in children and young adults, you can have that too, giving you what we call a tonsillitis. Do you remember mums? When we were younger, yeah, we don't see mums. Yes, <laughs> I remember having mums too. I you, had it once. Yeah, so that is the salivary glands once mm -hmm. that become infected. But because we've got the vaccines mm -hmm. now, we really ever see a case like mums here. Yeah. You can have um, it affecting the lymph nodes. Throughout the neck, we have lymph nodes all over, under the chin, by the jawline, coming down the line by the muscle there, which we call the sternocleidomastoid muscle. There are several lymph nodes, and these lymph nodes can be enlarged or swollen for many different reasons. It could be a viral infection, like a mononucleosis. It could be a uh, bacterial infection as a result to you too. Because remember, these lymph nodes drain or pick up any of the bacteria or any bad things from the system there, and it drains from the head right down, okay? Mm -hmm. And so you can have an infection, something in your scalp. Sometimes people have infections in the scalp, and that can cause the lymph nodes to be swollen as well, too. Certain medications, you've got things like the thyroid. Any pathology within the thyroid can mm -hmm. give you a mass in the neck, and you may not know exactly at the beginning once you have that. It could be what we call a multinodular goiter, where the thyroid has lots of lumps and bumps, okay? Mm -hmm. And it becomes very large. I'm sure you must have seen someone or persons walking around in the community with a mass in the neck. You could have a cyst in the thyroid gland as well, too, or in rare cases, you can have a thyroid cancer. So, and another condition you must have heard of, and many of our patients, we've diagnosed this condition um, in the community, lymphoma, mm -hmm. where that the white blood cells become infected, they have a problem, they are cancer there, leading to in, um, inflammation of the nodes there. Those nodes become huge and swollen, mm -hmm. it's usually non-tender. Mm -hmm. And then you may have lymph nodes swollen in other parts of the body, like on the, the armpit or the axilla by the groin. All right, so these are lots of the different conditions. You can even have a cancer of the larynx, um, the larynx or the throat, you know, the voice box. Those areas can have a cancer, giving you a huge mass in the neck. So quite a lot of conditions. Mm -hmm. can so they're broad, of course. This is just a broad. You just view. mentioned something that I want to touch on, and I'm sure it's happened to others. And I thought was just a switch in deodorants. When you get the little bump on the arm, uh -huh. it takes a few days and then it goes down. Sometimes it's, it hurts a little bit. Uh -huh. Is that associated with this condition that we're you're talking about when you said the no well that uh, you have lymph nodes all over most okay. uh, and you have them under the axilla for many reasons maybe when you're shaving you could have scratched the area create any sorts of infection or okay. within the area they might be a, and the lymph nodes respond while when so there is something so it's okay. usually some kind of bacterial or virus and stuff mm. and within a couple of days they yeah, they go back to normal they go away sometimes you may yeah. need to have some antibiotics on board or something to help control the infection okay, there. Okay, thanks for that answer. So as we continue, what is the most common underlying cause of neck lumps? Okay, with all the different uh, um, pathologies that you can get as a result of having a lump in the neck, the most common thing in is lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. We've got so many lymph nodes in the neck. And they can be enlarged for many reasons. Uh, most of them would be something transitory, something viral, something bacterial, and they resolve within a week or two. Mm -hmm. But usually if you have a um, mass associated with a lymph node that prolongs more than three weeks and it keeps prolonging without any resolution, you may have to think of something um, okay. other than just a common infection. It could be something sinister. But because we have so many lymph nodes within the neck, those are the most, uh, they would give you the most common cause of a neck mass. Mm. 
you use that word sinister, I'm like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> what, <what's laughs> you can have things like an infection oh of the ear that can give you an enlargement in the lymph nodes. Oh you could wow. have a sinus infection, as we spoke about. You could have strep throat or yeah. tonsillitis. You've heard of many yes, of I've these heard things. Of those. If you go to the dentist or you have a um, cavity that becomes infected, you can have your lymph nodes in your neck uh, swollen as well, too. So you always have to look for oh. the underlying cause. As, as we said earlier, you can have an infection of the scalp okay this is what i'm saying what is, our bodies are really connected because what yes. does the scalp but then it, it's it up has here. to drain yeah. the lymph nodes there yeah. uh, uh, oh drain right boy. there and those become inflamed okay with a neck mass what are some of the associated symptoms that one can have Okay, with a neck mass, that's a good question there. You can have so many symptoms, and everything is going to come back to what is the cause of this neck um, mass. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of times you may have no symptoms or very little symptoms, but depending on what is the underlying cause, because if it's an infectious process, like a tonsillitis, you can have things like fever, you can feel really, um, headaches, sore throat, you know, difficulty swallowing, or pain when you swallow pain in the ear so it all comes back to why these lymph nodes are infl inflamed mm. if it's associated with the thyroid you can have changes in your hair where your hair is fine and thinner you have mm. changes in your skin you can have changes like anxiety okay insomnia that affects your central nervous system you can have a racing heartbeat that we call palpitation you can have intolerance to heat or cold, and in conditions you can have decreased libido or decreased uh, desire to have intimacy. And I've seen patients who make those um, have present with those complaints. Mm -hmm. And then, based on the complaints, sometimes it allows you to focus in on a particular structure. Remember, we said that the neck has so many different structures. Mm -hmm. If it is associated with like a lymphoma, you can have weight loss. You could have patient tends to complain of. Uh, chills at night what you call night sweats mm -hmm. things like night sweats and if the mass becomes so large you can have compressive symptoms where the person say they have difficulty swallowing they feel like the sensation that they're choking especially when they lie down at night because of the compressive symptoms all right and you can have uh, things like blood in the saliva trouble bleed um, trouble breathing it all depends on what the underlying cause is so these are some of the associated symptoms that you may have Blood in the saliva. That one rang a bell to me. Where would that come from? What if you had uh, um, a tumor in the um, voice box? Okay, you can have, uh, uh, you can spit up because, it, uh -huh, or you could have some kind of saliva there with, uh, with blood in it. So it all depends, mm. okay? Boy. It's not to scare you, it's just that, uh -huh, but you can have mm -hmm. a tumor or cancer in the voice box or the larynx, but it's not very common. Okay. No, I just want to know, and, and it, I'm sure somebody else m might just have the question, but it's like, wow, our bodies are supposed to be good to us, and on days it just <laughs> works against <laughs> us. <laughs> so what characteristics of the neck mass should be considered for evaluation? Okay, so if you have a neck mass, of course, you want to take into consideration quite a few things. For example, is the mass painful or non-painful? That is very important. Lots mm -hmm. of these painful masks would suggest that it's something infectious, it's like okay. you have a bacterial or viral infection. Usually those are transitory. Usually if you have a neck mass that doesn't go away and it is non-painful mm -hmm. or painless, you're a little bit more concerned. The length of time that the mass has been present if the mass is under two weeks or under, it usually suggests something that is going to be transitory or something that is acute okay. and resolved. Mm -hmm. If you start seeing that the mass is prolonging three weeks, four weeks, and it keeps prolonging, it makes you want to investigate it more because it may suggest that something more serious is going on. Mm -hmm. All right? If you have the location of the mass is very important. Where is this mass located? Although we speak of the neck, the neck have different areas. We have the anterior aspect of the neck. We have the lateral aspect of the neck, the posterior aspect of the neck. Centrally, most of the conditions may be related to the thyroid, okay? Laterally, you may have most of the conditions be associated with things like the lymph nodes. So mm -hmm. the, the location of the mass on the neck is important. And the associated symptoms. Of course, we've spoken about that. You want to keep in mind, what are the associated symptoms you got? Is the patient having weight loss? That is gonna always going to prompt you to do more investigation. Mm -hmm. Is there fever? Is there hoarseness? 
is there difficulty or pain when the person swallows. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the associated symptoms. And you want to take into consideration the consistency of the mass. Is this mass hard? Is this mass soft or fluctuant? When you touch it, it kind of depresses. Mm -hmm. Is it fixed to the underlying tissue or to the skin? That may prompt you to think that it's something more um, of concern or sinister. If the person has a history of smoking prior or the person may have been um, abusing alcohol, alcoholic beverages in the past, they had an increased risk. They may have a, a cancer in the um, throat or the voice box, what we call the larynx there, all right? Mm. And so if they may have had any history of radiation. And usually once a person is younger, under the age of 30, usually the mass in the neck tends more likely to be benign or non-cancerous mass. So these are the things you want to keep uh, take into consideration. It's quite a lot, but there's always associating, because of these symptoms or these factors, it may point you to one condition over the other. Okay, so you mentioned the age of, <coughs> I don't know why my voice wants to go now, you mentioned the age of 30, mm -hmm. when uh, you said it's benign, so if one feels a lump at 31, 32, is there a cause for alarm? Not necessarily. So we said originally that most of the lump in the next, uh, neck is going to be benign. Okay. But you still want to check it and get some evaluation by your healthcare provider, especially that this lump persists more than uh, two weeks um, uh, or above. You okay. know, you want to get it evaluated. Okay. Let's proceed. So how is the neck lump or mass diagnosed? Okay, for us to diagnose it or come to a conclusion, we said there are many structures in the neck, many structures there, okay, uh, so, and many organs. So based on your symptoms, the history that the person gives you, of course, is going to be of vital importance. Mm -hmm. All right, a uh, 15-year-old girl who comes to your office and she's having difficulty swallowing, she's having a swelling in the neck, she had some fevers, that's going to likely point to something that's benign, mm -hmm. like an infection, a tonsillitis. So the history is important. And your physical examination, of course, you're going to have to do your, um, a thorough physical examination, examining the head, looking for any lesion, looking for any pustules, a little pockets filled with pus, mm -hmm. looking into the ear, you want to examine the throat, you want to examine examine and palpate the lymph nodes, whether they be in the neck or in the supraclavicular region, just above your collarbone, mm -hmm. under the armpit, in the groin. So if you're seeing multiple lymph nodes, you may want to think, is this associated more with a lymphoma? So getting up a good physical examination. And then you go to your blood test. If your white blood cells, like a CBC, which speaks to your blood count and stuff, you have a white blood cell that is elevated, suggesting that it's an infectious process. Mm -hmm. These are things you would prompt you. And then you can do x-rays. You can do x-rays of the neck. You can do x-rays of the sinuses, because if the sinuses are infected, you can lead to enlargement of the lymph nodes. You could do an ultrasound, especially for the thyroid. Ultrasound is a go-to um, standard. You want to look at the thyroid gland to see if there's an enlargement if there's a cyst there, okay? Uh, we've got some small organs just behind the thyroid that are called the parathyroid. They can become enlarged as well, too, and they're responsible for calcium in the blood. Mm -hmm. You could do an MRI if you want to look at the muscle. You want to look further at the bones, okay? CT scan. So all of these different um, diagnostic tests along with your physical examination and your history of the patient could then draw a conclusion of what, to, what you're dealing with. If it's a mass in the neck that hasn't gone away, you want to biopsy it to see, is it a lymphoma? Is it associated with a, a cancer of the thyroid? So all of these things come together would then um, draw a conclusion or get to, to your final diagnosis. Okay, so all of these um, the ways of diagnosing uh, the lump in the neck, mm -hmm. all of these has to be recommended by a doctor that you go take an MRI or you do the blood? Yes. Okay, yes, so you usually. can't just show up and say, no. okay, <laughs> no. I'm just making sure yeah. that persons know, just in case they say, okay, let me go over by the MRI and see what so happened in my yeah, neck. Yeah, no, usually for those diagnostic tests, uh, you would it would be best to have a referral, a doctor. Okay. Who's, uh, well, yeah. What do you call a specialist for this, this type of uh, uh, stuff? like goiters and thyroid problems and so on? Well, um, what you call especially for the thyroid, you, well, when, uh, for several of these things, you've got the, the throat or what we call the upper earways. You've got the ENT surgeon that deals with a lot oh, of the ear, nose, and throat the people. Yeah. Would, okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. So we are there already. 
So how is, how is a neck mass treated? Well, a neck mass is treated first based on what the diagnosis is of this mm -hmm. neck mass. Okay. If it is a bacterial um, problem, underlying problem of infection, you want to then um, get some kind of antibiotic on board. All right. If you have a thyroid cyst, you mm -hmm. can aspirate the cyst. Mm -hmm. If you have a um, goiter where the thyroid is large and lumpy, bumpy, you will have to remove that segment of the thyroid or most of it, okay? Mm -hmm. It all depends. If you have a lymphoma, once you have a biopsy, you may need surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy. It all depends, okay? So you want to keep in mind, once you come to a conclusion, what is the cause of the neck mass? For example, you have something like a cyst. We spoke about cysts. Mm -hmm. You could just uh, excise the cyst. If it's a lipoma, which is fatty tissue, you can excise that. Okay? So most of the neck pathologies are benign overall. But if there is something sinister or something cancerous, then you may have to do more in invasive surgery or procedures. Chemotherapy, radiation therapy may come into play. I hear you say excise. I don't know if I have the correct um, meaning of the word. You mean to cut to it out? To remove, okay. cut it out. Okay, okay, Sorry. Okay, so okay, so I got excise me to I remove just or cut it <laughs> out. Yes. So you have a, um, a mole on your skin and you mm -hmm. say you go to the doctor and your doctor remove it or you cut so it out excise. or excise it. Okay, good okay. stuff. I learned, I, I learned <laughs> something again. <laughs> yeah, it is important that you brought yeah. that up because we've got to learn some of the medical terms. That's yeah. okay. Always so in advancing yeah. and also you have to make sure that you understand what it is. Because we want everybody to listen, yes. that, listen and yes, know and that learn. you can always go to the good doctor <laughs> here because she's going to break it down for you. Mm -hmm. All righty. So can a neck ma can masses in the neck be prevented, Doc? Okay. That's a good question. In her. Can they be prevented? It all depends on what it is. Mm -hmm. Some things you may have some modifiable risk factors, modifiable changes that you can do. For example, in terms of preventing a cancer of the throat or cancer of the voice box or larynx, you can if you're a smoker, eliminate that, mm -hmm. okay? If you uh, drink alcoholic beverages quite heavily, you can decrease or eliminate okay. those. Those are things you can do. And if you have uh, early signs of having an infection of the throat, you want to get some antibiotics on board very early so that it doesn't become a simple tonsillitis, doesn't become an abscess which then be, is much more complex to deal with, okay? So it all depends. Some you can. Okay. There are things that you may not have any control over because they're genetically associated mm -hmm. with factors as well, too. So you cannot change those. You can't, you don't really have any control, per se, if you develop a cancer, a lymphoma, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are certain things you can and those that you can. Overall, we always encourage healthy lifestyle, eating well, exercising, of course. Mm -hmm. And I see one here that I didn't hear you mention, the HPV. Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, and I said, I wonder if that could cause anything there. Yes, um, that can be associated with cancer of the throat, okay? So uh, HPV, mm -hmm. we know that it's a human papilloma virus. It's a sexually transmitted disease, Ooh. okay? So it's associated. I have a question. I remember when in biology in high school, I learned that um, people get goiters because of... Uh, particular um, nutrient um, deficiencies, deficiency. yes. diodine. So uh -huh. can it be reversed? Well, usually no, but uh, in conditions where now we have the salts that are ionized, you, mm -hmm. you always see it on your container yeah. there. Yeah, because in the past, in countries that are underdeveloped or difficulties, social economical difficulties, you have that deficiency. Mm. You saw that a lot of the individuals develop uh, these huge thyroid mass. Yes. From not ingesting salt enough, or enough iodine, iodine. iodine. Oh, iodine, iodine. you need it because part of the formation of the hormones the thyroid hormones we call them t3 and t4 part of that you need iodine in the composition of those what if you want to stop using salt doc is it do you would you have to take iodine by itself to ensure that no, you no? But usually we don't have much uh, so much of a problem with it. So, but mm -hmm. it's in our uh, lots of our food and different things that we, we iodine. Can, yeah, okay, we consume. Okay. So it's not that you stop <laughs> eating <laughs> also, and it just disappear completely. Okay, I would not just think, asking so. for somebody yeah. else who might have that, that question. question. No, no. Jam, so do we have any callers, or the callers are just listening intently to the good doc today? <laughs> oh no. Okay, Doc, is there anything else you would like to 
enlighten the public on? Or we have about five minutes. Well, when it comes to a neck mask, because mm. we've got a society of 10 where persons are told, oh, if it's not hurting you, don't bother with it. If yeah. not, yes. Or put some hot water yeah, on it. Uh -huh. it and so many times we see patient comes in, although it is not a cancerous condition, it comes in, in a um, pretty advanced state. Okay. It's not the same as removing a thyroid that is, uh, let's say, four centimeter versus one that is ten centimeter. Okay. It's not the same of dealing with uh, a lipoma that is two centimeter, one centimeter versus one that is much bigger. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is imperative, though they're not having pain, and pain is usually as associated with something that is. Um, been more benign and more acute. So mm. the stuff or the conditions that have swelling to the neck that are not painful, actually those are the ones that we should pay more attention to. And you, I would uh, um, encourage our person, you shouldn't wait in, when you have a mass in the neck and it's growing and growing for someone to then tell you, oh, aren't you going to get that checked out? Yeah, of course, oftentimes our people have fear in terms of presenting to the doctors, but if it is much bigger, it presents much more of a complexity in terms of um, mm. surgical treatment. Yeah, because as you would say, once you catch it while it's yes, small, then yes. you can you can deal with it. Yes, Jamster. No, no. Strangely enough, yesterday I was reading um, about uh, a, a German lady who had to go to the states. She had a for years. She had this thing on her neck, a tube on her neck that got to be twenty pounds. She actually had to wear a sling, <laughs> a sling to carry it, mm -hmm. and. Um, she went to the states, and uh, I was really surprised that you, you had you have German doctors who are afraid to take that on. Apparently, they were afraid that they would damage nerves and other surrounding tissue, a healthy tissue. But this California doctor took it on and and managed to get her. But what was it in the end? Did you did they ever see uh, what it was? Mm, I f I'm, let me see if I find it. I'll f and I'll send it to you. <laughs> but I remember twenty pounds with a sling, and they just yeah, let that woman. Had, yeah. I wonder how long she had that because that just seemed yeah. like suffering. Mm -hmm. That's an extra yes, weight on yes. you, and on a on an odd place too. Yeah, very uncomfortable. Oh yeah. boy. Oh my. I think she was on that pimp a popper lady first, and then she must have referred her to another California oh, doctor. Oh, someone okay. else. Who, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. So, Doc, how often, and I know sometimes you can't give out all the de details, but how often do persons present themselves to you with um, lumps in the neck? Well, lumps in the neck, because they're so varied, uh -huh, it can happen quite frequently. It could be anything, from mm -hmm. something as small as a cyst to something as um, large or sinister a couple of weeks ago. I was able to diagnose a young lady with a lymphoma. She had a mass to the side of the neck, the lateral expect that she had, she had had for s approximately six months, and it turned out to be a lymphoma, so now she's undergoing treatment. So it all depends on, um, of course, we're going to have to deal with it case by case, but it happens frequently enough. Thyroid pathologies are quite, um, quite frequent, so you see a lot mm -hmm. of uh, neck masses associated with having cysts in the thyroid or thyroid nodule, things like that. I know they have some of us that like to self-diagnose, like we were going Google and said, oh, this is what this is or this is what that is. In the case of that patient, how soon should she have gone to the doctor and or did she, did she go to a doctor before and it just was... No, but um, very often times persons would go to the physician, of course, and the initial treatment might be to give them something, uh, antibiotics, because oh, okay. you may have thought that it was something um, benign, something bacterial or so. But once you see that it is not um, going away, most of these lymph nodes, they resolved over time. But if it progresses, then you have to start thinking, this may be something more than I first thought. Okay. Okay. But we always encourage persons to seek medical attention as soon as possible. Where okay, so that they can have whatever it is checked out. Mm -hmm. If it turns out to be benign, quite happily so. But you don't want to have something that may be sinister that um, goes unchecked <laughs> or undiagnosed or untreated. Mm -hmm. Anything that we can treat in an earlier stage, you know that it's always better. better and yeah. even if it is benign, we also know once you can treat it at an earlier stage, it doesn't get much larger and presents much more complexities when it ti in times of um, a surgical intervention. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, fair enough. Well, it's that time. So, Doc, any parting words for our listening audience who are tuned in to a weekly dose? 
Well, we just like to tell everybody to have a beautiful day. Be kind to one another. <laughs> yeah. Most things aren't Jeez. as serious as we think. Yep. Uh -huh. And I always like to say this too shall pass. So if you're frustrated, you're angry, you're hurt, you want to um, be rebellious or vent, this too shall pass. And you'll see that tomorrow is a better day. So we have to be kinder to each other. Yep. Have you ever thought about becoming a preacher? Because I feel <laughs> I, I feel the vibes every time you come. I'm like, she needs to preach. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of being a motivational speaker okay. like those kind of things okay, good <laughs> stuff good <laughs> yeah. stuff good stuff so everybody have a beautiful day and all thank right? you as usual okay. for taking time out every week and coming in and educating us we appreciate that greatly okay you have, have a great day thank you so much bye bye and to our audience we're gonna take a break and this is where i have to take my leave today don't worry i'll be here tomorrow again and the lovely chef richards and jamster yes. will uh, continue the show chef richards here yes yeah, she is I'm always close to tears when you have to leave, though. <laughs> no crying, please. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I found the article, so I'm going to send it to you WhatsApp in a bit, right? Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, right. Have mm -hmm. a good one. You got to We're 98.9, 98.9 WinFM. Maybe it's the way the brilliant gold liquid reflects our sunshine, or how the bright blue of its label mirrors the clear Caribbean skies overhead. Maybe it's the fresh, crisp taste of this beastly cold beer on a scorching hot day. Maybe it's even the way it brings us all together. But one thing is for sure, Carib is very much a part of who we are wherever we're from in the Caribbean. Carib, it's the way we play. Drink responsibly. Insurance Company Limited, where you get more coverage for less. Phone, it's after 9 o'clock. Returning champion, Chev Rich is with me. And uh, sadly, AZ and uh, uh, Contentia had to leave. So, what's up, my girl? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> and thanks for bringing my breadfruit waffles. <laughs> no problem. My, my breadfruit no hash problem. browns, as you call them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know. I have to dream dream up all all kinds of cool ways to eat those, like <laughs> with, you know, um, um, maybe tuna or just butter. Sometimes I just Fair smear butter. butter on them, and yeah, not margarine, I have butter. Yeah. Um, Thank you for saying that because a lot of us don't know the difference. <laughs> know the difference, difference there is yeah. a difference. <laughs> Surprisingly, so um, I, I there's some stuff in the chat that uh, we never get to because certain people are what you call one note. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> certain people who will go unnamed. Uh -huh. um, yeah, fight me. <laughs> what? Okay, so what was I saying? No, yeah. So um, we had, you know, sadly we had another, we had another. Um, yes. 
Um, another, yeah. I'm going to say it. Yeah. Not, yes. I don't know what to say. And, uh, you know, someone was telling me this morning how apparently how gruesome. That one was? That one was. Um, You know, Sharon Ray is a good question this morning. She said, and I actually think this is something we probably should broach as bro- broach for discussion. Uh, she said, I wonder if the police officers get any kind of uh, maybe psychological counseling for when they have to. I mean, think about it. You're a police officer. Sometimes you, you have to go and... Uh, you have to be on the scene of a violent crime. Mm. Maybe you go on the scene of where a body that has been decomposing. Mm. You know, all of that kind of stuff. And she was saying, and I thought, actually, that's a very good question. I wonder mm. if the police force has any kind of um, counseling. Uh, counseling or even monitoring where maybe <coughs> periodically they would. Uh, maybe check the officers who have to deal with this kind of stuff and say mm-hmm. how you how you how do you handle even if even if there's necessary apparently any kind of mm-hmm. let's say adverse um response to, but just to ask yeah. um how do you handle seeing all this yeah. gore and stuff mm-hmm. do you, are you handling it okay do you have nightmares it would be nice if they had a kind of proactive um Mm-hmm. Not just reactive, but co- you know we tend to be very reactive around here. Yeah. It would be nice if there's a kind of proactive program where they would, you know, at least have the um, compel the officers to have like, um, mm-hmm. especially the ones who have to deal with that kind of stuff. Well, I should hope so. I yeah. in my thinking, um, if you're in that particular department, I'm thinking that the training should yeah. be here, and also that I'm hoping they would have stuff like that, and um. I remember asking, like, when they were having all these young guys getting shot, like, what about the younger fellas? What about the students? Like, I was by my niece the other day, and she was telling her mom, like, oh, this person got shot, that person got shot, and this person died. And I was like, oh, my. Our youth have been exposed to not just even death, but gruesome forms of death so much more than previous generations let's take this call caller mm-hmm. go right ahead we have some calls coming in hey go ahead caller good island morning, team Dan, hey what's up good morning chef mm-hmm. good morning yeah. we always welcome you when you come with your presence in the studio thank you <laughs> <laughs> i have enough of your oh, yeah thank you. you add volume to the airwaves thank you so much i appreciate it <laughs> um i'm surprised mm-hmm. to um the dovetailing into the Good Doctors program, um, there was um, a little discussion mm-hmm. where opposition members of the government would want to seek audience with the government. I don't think that will ever happen. However, government will have to um, bear the responsibilities of what the discussion may be have today as you speak as we speak and it's ironic though that opposition members were not able to give their ideas to bring about an amicable solution bearing in mind the PAM and the PLP and the CCM from the (coughs) unity administration the prior administration to this one and the record will speak volume as to how they have curtailed they're spiraling. They were confronted with something similar or the same to what transpires at this moment. And the record will show that somehow it was on a downward trajectory in terms of the body count. As opposed to now, this present body count is on an upward trajectory and it's not nice. So for the government the and present administration to be reluctant, that is the norms within politics. But, but but you know you know I don't like I don't believe in blaming governments necessarily for crime. Huh? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say that I don't believe in blaming governments for crime. People are gonna people are gonna be wilding regardless of who's running the government. So you know. Um, I feel like it's more of a 
societal problem with it's multifaceted and everybody has a part to play right but we don't okay the opposition doesn't need if the government is unresponsive we don't need and that's why i keep trying to tell people we don't need to wait on government to do our part if the government is not giving you the response you like is the government members are they god so if the government never moves if they become the most delinquent government ever will we then just wither away when john the grave dot so my thing is crime is always a societal problem right i notice now they want to treat it as a public health issue and i don't wonder if us as kitchens don't realize that walk around just walk through bastia and see how many young guys it's like every week you see your one added with mental issues um somebody was telling me the other day that the psyche ward full and people might say but well, i ain't got nothing to do with crime but it does because if you look at the demographic that's affected our young men again the crime young men people who are going crazy as we said majority of them are not even older men is the younger guys so we really have to start analyzing and saying well what is going on with our young men what are we not hearing what are we not paying attention to if they're going crazy I am are going on crime <coughs> yes yeah, sorry i am listening to the conversation and mm -hmm. while i can agree on certain things successive government has agreed on mm -hmm. the growth and crime is not just in a, vo a vacuum by itself mm -hmm. i agree successive government has agreed on the growth of economies their economy mm -hmm. <coughs> and all things good but when it comes on to the negative aspect of it my question is who is responsible as 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 um persons in authority someone has to have a uh, hold the responsibilities for for um good growth in in economies and they will brag and boast about it they will show you the figures they'll show you the the, the spreadsheet with all of the growth mm -hmm. like for instance in tourism mm -hmm. and you heard the prime and the pump the minister of tourism took credit for you know you know being the minister within the caribbean so if they're going to take credit for I agree. good things Too. within the economy and within our societies and within um the social fabric of who we are as people what about the other side the flip side of it someone has to bear the responsibility so well, therefore, we, mm -hmm. if if the administration is not going to bear that responsibility, all of us is to be blamed. Then I can agree on that. Mm -hmm. Well, blame yeah, absolutely. Let's pat ourselves on the back. Yeah, there's enough blame to go around for sure. Mm -hmm. but, okay, but so um, at least yeah. I don't. don't say well, the nation I, is to be blamed. Yeah, I don't. Well, think what I agree with the government part is that yes. <clears throat> there are certain things that can be done, even if they can't stop the crime. We know there are certain factors, economic factors, Absolutely, other yeah. stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, the way they respond to the crime and all of that. But what I'm saying is, over the years, like when I was growing up, it had I've never remembered a time in my life, from childhood till now, that there hasn't been gun shootings and like I, I, I don't know. Like we keep saying, "Oh my God, it's getting so bad every time." I cannot remember a time that I've not experienced. I've lost family members in my, when I was in primary school, come right up. So I've not remembered a time in our history that has not been bloody, just to show you. I, I and, agree. Um, and I said one last thing before mm -hmm. I leave um, exit. Yes. I agree. Me being in the tourism industry mm -hmm. and me being welcoming my guests, our guests, mm -hmm. there are two push ships in the town. I'm down here. Welcoming our guests. Our guests, they are not naive they know they read they peruse before they come to different destinations and um, the, the, it would be out there in the in, in the in the in the open but one thing this particular destination yeah. and so forth but mm -hmm. they come regardless nevertheless they come because these are destinations that that were coming to and but still to not to as bad as where some of them coming from <laughs> and the insecurity mm -hmm. all of these things is what we even though you're talking about counsel for the officers, we in this industry has to be confronted with our guests also. And how can we navigate 
as to how does we assure them that this destination is shared, I assure you, you're going to go to the various sites without any untoward. I mean, when the guy got shot, the businessman on the F.P. Williams in that area, I have had my students from the Ross who said to me they had what to divert and go down another area to improvise to get around to the Ross because the whole of that F.P. Williams was somewhat cut off. Mm -hmm. So how are we to uh, uh, alleviate the concern of our guests that are coming to our destination, and we welcome them about these 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 um, social ills in our community. Mm -hmm. I listen now to here. Thanks for listening. Okay. Well, Jamstar, I will say this: that the guests, the, the thing with crime, right? Uh, you have places like America and so forth. We have a lot of random crime. You have these serial killers, you have mass shootings, we don't have that. Crime in Saint is very targeted. Mm -hmm. Even the areas it happens for the most part, very targeted. Even with um, when you listen to it, you can normally find some personal vendetta between there, right? So it's not like um so you'll generally not find that visitors and so forth having an issue and being in certain areas having an issue. It's it's a very targeted group of people. So, but that's the thing is like, for me to say convince these people, I'm like, this is the particular type of crime. Perhaps we need to define what it is. This is what's happening. It's not random crime. Yes, other countries out there would like to paint you as if you're having a lot of random crime, but our crime can't compare to them. I'm not saying that our crime is any less terrible, but as far as the tourism aspect of it, these people are, are, are safe. We've never had anything, any issue with that. People got probably one another. They go after one another. Very targeted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I wanted to talk about that just a little bit, just to, to reference. You remember that video last week? Short video clip talking about the, you know, the, the, the shootings that happened last week. Oh. And someone was trying to frame it as though it meant that saying it was necessarily this this crime hellhole mm -hmm. and this shooting hellhole. Mm -hmm. And just because of how we framed, oh, the guy was saying, oh, well, look how close the, the, where the guy got killed is to the, I mean, give me a break. I mean, it was very disingenuous mm -hmm. and, and, and very misleading. And this and is where, would, mm -hmm. you know, I would like to think that most people who come off these ships know, they're smart enough to know that um, these things are going to happen regardless of wherever, wherever they stop mm -hmm. uh, on the, 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 the cruise ships. The cruise ships, I think mm -hmm. these things are going to happen. You mm -hmm. know, and that's why I don't like the political thing as well. I find that we have allowed politics to hijack every single aspect of our lives, and then we're unable to find solutions mm -hmm. because even with finding a permanent solution to the crime, it's something that you would have to dig very deep. And instead of really looking at other countries that solved these issues that would have gone through it, we, we every five years we have a new approach. Every five years we blame somebody else. Rather than do rather than doing than an, an evolutionary exactly. approach where building on the things that worked for the previous exactly. administrations, eh? Um, there's no call, continuity. Yeah, there's a caller. Call over right ahead. Uh, yes. Um, we run the risk of not getting numb to what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the younger ones, like you guys, um, may have grown up with shootings, gun-related crime. But we older ones have not, okay? There were times when this was, I mean, unheard of. This kind, this level of gunplay was unheard of. And it doesn't matter how we, we should not just try to rationalize it or say, yes, it's targeted, so mm -hmm. most of us don't have to worry about it. It is not a good place to be. Well, when I and said so that... Let, let, mm -hmm. let's, let's go for solutions as opposed to living with um, this level of crime. Well, what I was saying, let me clear this first. And I got kind of cut off when I was making that statement. So I was saying there, isn't, there hasn't been a time in my life when I have not been exposed to this and this has not been going on. And I said that to say this. That would have spanned several administrations but because every time the crime happens we never cry as a people 
What can we do? What is happening? We don't do the postmortem. We don't analyze our society and say what's causing this. Every time I can remember for my life, we, we blame whoever the politician is at the moment. Right. And, 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 and it, it and has really... But it has stunted the discussion the on the crime resources. prevention. They're the ones with the resources. Okay, and so uh, we expect a lot of effort from them. And they run themselves, and, and in a sense, they bring this on themselves because when they're in opposition, they, exactly. say, you know, they criticize the, what the current Exactly, that's the easy thing are. to do. And when they get in, now they're, they're on the defensive. But do you okay, know? That is why I say we have to get together um, seriously uh -huh. as opposed to compartmentalizing it and saying, well, my solution is better. Now I'm in government. Um, That's exactly what yes, my it, point it, was. It shouldn't be a competition. Uh, I agree. It shouldn't be a competition. From that, that kind of combat, oh, compat but one of the things, is, one of the things I think that needs to happen, you saw recently this case in, um, in the States where two parents got charged. Two parents got charged oh. for their, their son, their minor son, I think he was 17, who did a school shooting. Mm -hmm. And they were charged. They were not going to prison. I think they're each going to be spending like 15 to 19 years in prison or something separately. Mm -hmm. They were charged, and they were actually charged and tried separately. What, I what feel like, well, I mean, negligence, negligence yeah. Mm -hmm. um, ne parental negligence, I guess. I mean, mm -hmm. imagine, buying, imagine buying your son a... a, 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 a uh, uh, oh, they bought the guns they, for his birthday. I mean, ridiculous. But, but, but that is that, that in, in this case, uh, Jamstar, mm -hmm. we can't. I know we like to say it's young people. No, no, no but, it, young people. The, but the point it's I'm making is, is but you can't hold it. The, no, 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 no. And you can't hold the, the parents' responsibility. Well, well, no. What, what I mean is, what I mean is, at the very root, I mean, there clearly there has to be something. There cl clearly there has to be. There have. To there has to be problems in the way parenting is done around the way all of a sudden in the last 20, 30 years we've been having all these killings and, 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 and gangs and all this. Don't have the the, thing is, the, the main like thing is before. we have to get to a place where nobody can point fingers at anybody else. We have so had we have had a lot of children solution, having children. We, we have, have had a lot of solution or strategy, <laughs> right? Then if it fails, all of us take the blame. If it succeeds, all of us take the credit. Right now, it can be, com like I said, compartmentalized into, well, you're in charge, so if it fails, it's you. If it succeeds, it's you. Okay. We should get away. We should resist the temptation to Okay. To, to okay. We, have, we have another caller. Right. Uh, okay. Caller, go ahead. Yeah. Caller, go ahead. Hello? Hello, caller. Go right ahead. <laughs> hello, hello. Good morning now. Hey, good morning. Um, a, a couple of things I, I want to talk about. One, where everybody, I'm a part of like politics. And um, the thing <laughs> is, somebody said, somebody said, uh, politics, we, we put politics in everything. Yes, politics is in every single thing we do. Anything I do, whether I want carnation milk or ID milk, the government decide that. Every single thing we politics inside of it. But, but that's not the point I want to get at. The point I want to get at, at is government is responsible for solving crime. That's why you put them there, to solve crime. And I, 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 you can't tell me I can blame myself. I can't go in people's houses and say, oh, he got gun, take away his gun. I can't, I can't do that. Government can. They can. And they know the people who have gun. They know the areas where they have gun. And then they need to go after them and make stronger rules. Um, if, if you find a gun in somebody's house, take the gun from them, and you punish the family. That, you know, you know, to go to Singapore, you can't go in there with chewing gum. You can't chew chewing gum in Singapore. It might sound like a stupid stuff to us, but we like to talk about freedom. We have freedom. And we up and down killing one another. A man kill a man, they say. Don't put um, put Dante. Walk up and kill a man. Just like that. Well, come on, man. You want to be we, we government can't fight against them kind of silly crimes? But we did not do anything, government not doing anything. And let me ask y'all a question. I'll leave it here. Y'all don't find it weird. When Pam in power, you have less crime. When Labour in power, you have a lot more crime. 
That sounds like some secret, private kind of society, something. I don't know. But it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I don't know when we can come together and seriously stop, stop, stop when we can come together and we can fix football, we can come together and fix cricket, we can come together and do education. But why not come together and fix crime? Thanks for your time, James. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, well, clearly, why? Clearly, no. Well, no one has the answers, or no one person has the answers. So, um, you know, nine twenty-five. Well, uh, I feel right. Like when we say that <coughs> the government, to say that the government alone has to solve crime, to me, I don't tell people like these government people are they from outer space are the criminals <laughs> from outer space we talk uh, about our problems as if you know i'm just perfect i'm here and you have these elements coming from outside that are mucking things up but we do not want to look at the elements in our homes in our own society that contribute to these problems <laughs> if governments could have solved crime america and other places that have even more resources would have no crime it's a social issue again i just saw somebody they're looking at it now as a health issue and all crime is multifaceted people do crimes for different reasons okay no oh, we have a caller caller go right ahead yeah good morning to you guys bro. hey what's up yeah pretty good mm -hmm. um yeah even even though government is not to blame they're responsible you know why we why we have a portfolio of national security the crime issue is right up underneath that portfolio. You know what I'm saying? The government of the day, the man got to try to put themselves into start trying to solve these crimes. We can't have a society that's going to run away. You know what I mean? We, we got somebody killed down there at the ferry terminal in broad daylight. And Chef mentioned about we don't have mass shooting. But it's leading up to this. And the moment we get the first mass shooting in Sinkers and Nevis, then the whole community going to be more terrorized. That's going to be another level that the crime is going to go to. So if that man just sit there and watch this stuff, we'll keep going and going. Nobody wants to come together for these national issues. It's too much politics in the place. You know, when the That's issues rise saying. to the national level, when, when the issues rise to the national level, we got to take the politics out of it. That's exactly what I'm saying. Solve these national issues. And if we stay there, letting this stuff festering like this and keep having these divisions politically, then the society is going to just take the hit when, when, when the hammer come down, when the big hammer come down. Look down in Trinidad, there was, there was, a, there was a, a case down in Trinidad like yesterday, this couple of days ago. A little baby got decapitated. The region and the whole, man, is becoming more violent. When I listen to Andrew Holness from Jamaica, from since, Chris, from since New Year's Eve this year, earlier this year, New Year's Eve, the man said that they're going to try to make some efforts to tackle crime, and, and he's actually, he has actually taken some steps in Jamaica. One thing I like about Jamaica, bro, we, 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 might have, we might say Jamaica got this stereotype when it comes to crime, but one thing I'm going to tell you in Jamaica, when it comes down to it, bad boys against cops, it's going to be a shootout, bro. Sink is the got to get prepared to fight really get down hard and fight in these crimes. That is one thing I like about Jamaica, bro. Babylon them, going to shoot up them bad boys. It's going to just be a shootout. But, 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 but I hope things get better, man. And I hope, you know, we could find the solutions. And thanks a lot, man. You guys have, have a good day. Okay, you too. Okay. So that's, that's the thing, right, Jamster? <coughs> Wait, let's, let's take this other call here. Call right ahead. It's 929. Go ahead. Hello. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Mr. Jamster and your lady there. Mm-hmm. I'm very impressed with that lady there, you know. Very impressed with her. She's not a good potential politician. No. <laughs> and she could discuss any subject matter. I don't know if she's been following me. Yes. <laughs> That's just for a little joke, though. I'm not bad. I'm, a, I'm, not a, I'm a nobody. She's pretty cool, isn't anyway, she? Yeah. <laughs> Unless people become godly, uh, more godly, you can have all these problems. There are more and more people are straying away from God. And that is the problem. I don't care what scientific research they would have done. I don't care what they talk about is a health problem and all of that. The more people stray away from serving the master who created us, 
these problems are going to continue. In fact, more people out there who are straight away from him or don't commit themselves to him um, than, than who have who, who, who been doing that. And don't tell me people in church is a good thing because we are human beings and people slip because the past, what's his name there? Um, Judas and, and said the apostles, they did things to God well, to his son. But then he forgave them. But they were still with him. So, I want to say this. I remember in the 80s, in the 80s, 1980s, New York had spilled over with crime and crime and crime and the city of San Francisco. And they did a lot of drastic, drastic things in New York. I mean, they have resources that maybe other countries don't have. And they, 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 I think was, I can't remember the mayor, but anyway, he, they, they employed a, a, a lot of people in the police force. Police on horseback, police on foot, police on bicycle, and so forth. They did that for a period of time, and they brought the situation under control. But when whether Pam blaming Labour, Labour blaming UPP or whatever, that's foolishness. I mean, nothing wrong with it. People as your leaders and potential leaders and whatever. You represent him people. Nothing wrong with you sit down and talk. The government is bound to accept or appreciate what they say. But they should make an effort. This is a, this is a, a earthly thing. This is not in heaven near a uh, gospel. And uh, lastly, I read a story once. There, these Portuguese islands are sold, and um, Madeira and so forth. By the way, uh, Azores is where the transatlantic slave trade emanated, and they refer to those people there. That's as via the Portuguese, via the Portuguese, right? Portuguese island, man. I know what I'm saying. They refer to them as the brown race, the Azores. Mm-hmm. We got used to pillage the African women because they're close to the main, the, the continent. Anyway, I say all of that to say, a boat was traveling from, I think it was from England towards the Caribbean and the Americas, and they broke down and they went into one of those islands. And by the time the people were going to an inn, they used to refer to hotels as inn, those days. And by the time, before they reached the inn, all the people... They were walking with their suitcase, etc., and trunks and so forth. All of them were stripped of their clothing, drawn to the underwear. And their, 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 their uh, carriers them were, were, were emptied. So, so, you see, that's the reason why crime was committed, because the people were poor and impoverished. And they came down here to work in the sugar industry, from Madeira in particular, because they were poor and impoverished. Indians came to, and of the Chinese. So there are, like the, the lady there said, and I agree with her, there are several, in fact, a multiplicity of reasons why people commit crime. These people who run into each other, all of them involved in things, uh, illegal things too. So that only going to change when God comes. So don't care what they do. Saying so the politician then going to say things to the public to make you feel good. Go please us, but they themselves are not God. So, they can not they can work. Don't care what they do. The countries need to be serving God more, and then things will change. And the paper laws, the paper, paper, paper laws um, they got, they're they sympathizing with, with the, 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 uh, the criminals. Them. Trinidad are going right now. Trinidad, you also <coughs> compromise a lot of things. And they, they used to use it about race and race against each other. And from the time that starts to happen, Trinidad get worse and worse and worse. So it is now. Have a good day, Mr. Johnson. Okay. Uh, before we go to the break, uh, I want to read this. Uh, I think I sent it to you as well in the chat. Um, I got this from um, a listener. Um, uh, the issue re crime is not whether it happens all over the world. Crime and its impact on society has always been a matter of perception, quote unquote, they have. Not the numbers or who the victims or targets are. The matter for us as small countries 
is that these are reported and circulated. Reported on and circulated. We are heavily dependent on tourism. If we are placed on a severe travel advisory, it will affect that sector. However, more importantly, it affects us locally. Forget the tourists for a minute. What about the citizens and residents here? We are to matter. Charity begins at home. Let's address this crime situation, not because of our visitors, but for us residents. Absolutely, I love that. The solution is societal and multi multifaceted. Well, let's just go for the break because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to explain some stuff. I don't okay. Think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, let's take a little quick break. We're different. We're 98.9. 98.9. Win FM. Fruta. Fruta full of vitamin thing. Real fruit juice. Fruta full of vitamin. Pop up and the goodness just live in. Fruta every night. Fruta every morning. It's the amazing taste and quality in fruit juice you've come to know and love. Anytime, anywhere, any occasion. Fruta is your tastier, better, healthier choice. We got the vibes, Fruta. Real, real nice, Fruta. And for the families, remember to pick up the one liter. Looking for something extra? Look no further. Supplegen's got you covered with our Supplegen Shop and Win promotion. You can be the lucky winner to take home one of three cash prizes. Just spend $12 or more on any Supplegen Tetra products at your favorite supermarket, write your name and contact at the back of your bill, and place it in the specially marked entry form box for a chance to win big. Promotion runs April 1st to May 30th, 2024. Supplegen boosts you up. And I'm back with Chev on Island Tea. And she was, as usual, dropping some serious knowledge during the commercial break. You going to drop it again? Sure. <laughs> No, well, you, want to take this, you want to take this call first? Let's take the call okay. first. Call up, go right ahead. Call up, go right ahead. Island T. Yes, sir. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Now, Rusty said something so so instrumental, and so I said I had to call in and, and, and make it more clear. The reason why labor, whenever the labor of government is in, you tend to find an increase in crime, because crime will always be in a land where you have people. But the main reason is this, and I want you to also understand that when they were doing their um, motorcade after they, w they were declared the winner of, of the new government, they had a, an incident where a woman fell, and I think she had a head concussion, and she went into a coma, and she died. You know, during the motorcade, that was an indicator. But the real reason is this. When Labour was trying to get into power back in 1999, somewhere around there, had a notorious man from Jamaica who had appeared in St. case and he had appeared just as a normal citizen, but he was a, a drug baron. And it is alleged, and I say alleged, that the Labour government made an alliance with this particular man to fund their campaign, and whatever would the exchange would be, we, I don't know what it is, but whatever the exchange would have been, if he funded the campaign, he would have certain rights, I would imagine. And it was noted in the public that this had happened. Suddenly, gun importation came on the rise like never before. U.S. dollars came on the island like never before. And then this man started to reveal himself. And if you're living on the island for the last 20 years, or even maybe a little less, you would know who I'm, I'm, who I'm talking about at this moment. This man was extradited to the United States after some time because he was he was charged for importing some illegal um, drugs from the Caribbean to America, and he was under surveillance and they didn't know. And then after he left, those guns continued coming into the country, unless the father of labor, Dr. Denzel Douglas, repent openly for this allegiance, making this alliance with this person. Every time labor is in power, you will always find an increase in the crime because it's a seed that's so to bring this thing here. If you have unity in, in power, you will have crime. If you have time in power, you will have crime, but not to the level like when labor gets in power. It will be skyrocket. It just go up, way up. And it's for that reason 
it's the same is the same reason when when Jesus was being condemned and Pilate asked, Would I release Barabbas or Jesus? And they said, Give us Barabbas and he said, What shall we do with Jesus? To crucify him. And he said he said, um, I wash my hands clean of this man's blood and the idiot people them say, His blood be up on us and up on our children. That is where the Holocaust came in, you know. Because they said, Let his blood be up on us and up on our children's children. That May I ask you a question? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it's not so much a question as maybe a statement, right? I understand what you're saying, but these arguments, right, is what frustrate a lot of us, the younger ones. I woke up one oh, day. It frustrate you? I'll, I'll tell you. I woke up one day, right, and I was told that two of my cousins, not one, but two who I grew up with were shot dead right next to one another. And their mother had to go and identify them. Her first and her second born. My uncle has spiraled into a drunken stupor and has not recovered. Right? And when we as the younger ones have to live through this, because we know these people personally. A lot of times the older ones, you'll hear this person, child. But we grow up with these people and we are constantly losing these people. Right? And then when I look back at their lives and I see the family structure, I see how even my uncle would have raised them, how he would have not known conflict resolution, how our society has these traumas and these flaws and these way of covering over. We don't like to look at our own ills. And so when we as the young people can look back, and even though I was hurt and they're my family members and I by no means think they deserved it, I can look at my society, the community we were in, what was happening, and even their actions and see how it could have led up to this tragic moment. But when we come on and we, we look at politics and we intertwine the conversation of politics with religion, and once you get religion in there, people brains get fuzzy. So when this is overshadowed, our experiences are overshadowed by these ultra political religious arguments nothing is solved even in the if we can, let me, let when i go back to solid. persons in pam and i talk to them the crime problem is this when i talk to people in labor the crime problem is this and everybody can give me dates and persons but yet it is not solving it because well, at the end of the day that is not the only reason if our people were stable and good then nobody could come in and cause this. We have to look at the well, underlying okay. I reasons. Just, I just showed you. I just showed you. During the time of when the labor was trying to get into power, we had guns on the island, but it was very little. That's what I'm trying to show you. Watch it. Watch it. When people don't have a way how to, how to deal with things, and they have a tool that they could use to quickly resolve it, what do you think they're going to do? Now, let me ask you something. Let me ask you an actually important question. Mm -hmm. Our society is very small. I met a lady from the UK that said to me, Dion, one time in the UK, they shut down the whole country and they brought in extra police and they scanned the whole island, uh, sorry, the whole country and removed all guns that they could have found. They, they shut down everything for about three or few, a few days and they scanned. Nobody was allowed to come outside. They, they had preparation to get what they wanted, and nobody was allowed to come outside. And they scanned the whole country and removed all the guns they could have found. Whenever a crime happens in St. Kitts, and they caught the person with the gun, I just wonder, what is police to discuss with these people? They don't say, listen, brother, if you tell us where this gun comes from, we will lessen the charges on you, and we will work with you, but you have to tell us. And they sourced who he tells them, and they go to that person, and they say, well, listen, we want to know where this gun come from. If you could tell us, we will cut down your charges. And, and the, the, where they can't trace it, where, where the gun problem is so in a small island, we know that they're coming from out, outside, and where the police them can't do something, where they can't bring in somebody to infiltrate the gangs, infiltrate the person, and find out who is the person controlling these guns. What the police will be doing when, they, when they're interrogating these people? I always, always want to, to wonder. Caller, what call call there's also something I need to correct you on. The I mean, person you... The person you talked about, he's actually Ketishan. He just happened to ha have lived in Jamaica for a long time, but he's actually Ketishan. Does it matter? Does it matter? No, did but I just thought. I just thought. Did I say? Did I say? Did you I said. You said. Was? You said a Jamaican. Um, so I just. No, I'm not trying to fight or anything. I need no, to. No, no, no. But but okay. Oh. So if he was a Ketishan, 
What does that? Okay, we always had people on the island who was notorious for certain things, and our only car, one of them, is alleged. And here they would have said alleged that Zambo was in certain things, alleged. But it was never to the level like how it was after this particular person came here, right? Even whether he was a condition or not condition. I'm saying to you that there's that there's a spiritual implication as to why it's happened. Now, this woman said that she, she made at some point. Also, we must understand that there are certain curses that op, that operate. If you don't know nothing about the cur- curse and how they operate, then you need to study certain parts of the Bible to understand when a, when a curse is, is, is predominant in a family, what you expect to see happen. If it's a, something to have to do with a sickness, that person could be eating the best that could be eaten, exercising the best they could, and they come down with something. Why, 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 how did this happen? They're doing everything good for health. How did they come down with a terminal illness? A curse was running in the family. Where did the curse originate? You Maybe also along said... the line or the bloodline of the family, something okay. was done that was never amended. Okay, you... John F. Kennedy you, was a... You, you, you're kind of all over the place. You also said um, no, 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 that... No, no, no. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. What you're not going to do is talk over me. Um, what I'm saying, you started from the beginning and you said that, the, okay, you said a lady fell off and the party won and she had a concussion and died. What, did, what does that, that have to yeah, do with That was an example. That was an indicator I said as to something looming to happen. So you're saying that basically, uh, if I have to pick up what you're saying, you're saying that, Labor is cursed because of the things labor people did, and they are cursed on the land. No, but what not, I'm no, trying no, to not, tell not you is, no, no, depending on who you speak said, to, people would say Pam is the curse, people say labor is the curse, but in between this lot of argument said, back no, and forth, we are I not solving our legend, problems. There was allegiance made during a certain allegiance. time of the... Mm-hmm. I, I didn't say that. I said there was an alliance made with a certain man for help in return to give certain privileges to. That's what I said to you. I didn't say, that's what I said to you. That's where it started. And I'm only saying this to you because of where, this is where was the indicated. He said to me that, he said, he said on the radio that it appears that every time labor is in, there's something happening that skyrockets like some, there's some kind of private thing. And I said, you know what, let me, let me, let me bring it to, to how my mind has, has always been seeing it. That is why I call you. If you didn't make that comment, I might have not called to discuss this, but Okay, can I, Anna, can I can I ask this question too? People could put it another way, Jamster, so, right? And I hate to even have a political discussion. Mm-hmm. But if you're telling me that crime is under control, people be- behave the bad boys behave themselves under the pam. But when labor get in, they raise up. That could also be conspiracy as well. Somebody could say, well, they mean no peace under labor to prove a point. L- what I'm l- saying l- is these arguments do not help us. In our society, we have a lot of issues. We have economic issues that need to be solved. We build up. I'm a young woman who came to the school system, right? Everything was put in place for me to succeed. And there's nothing wrong with that because women needed building up. You can find tons of scholarships for women and everything. I find that we do not put this effort into our young men. Their thinking has changed. There are a number of things affecting us as a people. A lot of us do not report the crime. We argue with the police, but we know that we child have this and we don't report it. When it's us, well, it's me, it's me child, but when it's somebody else, when somebody gets shot, everybody hear who the mother is. You can't hear who the father is. You know, these are, these are fundamental issues and, and, and traumas in our society that we don't deal with, Right? We're not dealing with them. When a mother come home and she know she's son out there doing wherever and wherever, but she not got no time. She got two and three jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These are things that affect and this as well. Across the board, I got I've been getting texts about uh, really flaming that last caller. It's um, ridiculous. Talking about <laughs> not, okay, let's see what this caller says. Caller, go right ahead. Okay, well, I don't know. Yeah, so, you know, this crime thing, this is always, you know, this is always a a touchy topic for everyone because, uh, and you made a very good point just now because that was a very good point. I mean, it could be some, we don't know. The point you just made about crime spiking on the labor, maybe somebody decided, okay, let's make sure. Can I make a thing about religion now? People are yeah, upset, ahead. but they tell us, you know, we need to return to God because that's where we're having some problems. When blacks, which most of us are blacks, 
who introduced us to this? Our, our blacks that come in here, we, we are not Ethiopian blacks for the most part. Mm -hmm. We come from that area where, where people had other religions, right? Mm -hmm. Who introduced us to Christianity and was it done with love and caring or was it done with brutality and oh, raping and all that not. kind of stuff? Certainly not. Don't so get why, me started. Why do people <coughs> assume that our relationship with our religion, which is Christianity, brings about peace and love in our system? It does not. It, it came about and who was more harsh and, and, and criminal and bloody to us than these very, the slave master gave us mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying anything is wrong with Christianity because what they're saying is the version they brought. But to just say return to God, a lot of people don't even understand what God is. God is just, when you look back at your history, God was presented to a lot of people with a big stick. You learn this brutality. This brutality has been passed on in our blood. We were beaten, raped, murdered. In fact, and that's what we used both to. Both of those uh, major religions were spread via the, the sword you have to be exactly. said the muslims uh, and the muslims are equal equally as culpable for reparations and, okay. and the slavery as 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 the europeans okay what about the i'm glad that you're saying it because yes. when i say these things certain people get offended but you have to look at this is why our problems seem as if they can't be solved my mayor motley spoke about it when the, 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 the plantocracies left the island, they left us bankrupt with the people who were uneducated. And we, but we don't talk about the emotional scars and the psychological scars that we were left with. Yes, we can ask for reparation monetarily, but how will we ask for reparation psychologically? Exactly. We have post-traumatic stress syndrome that is passed on through the genes. We don't look at these things. Sorry. True. <laughs> Genetic <laughs> memory, yeah. Go ahead, caller. Yes, Sam. So good morning. Okay, no, you, you, no call for you. Sorry. Ooh. He called last night and dropped an f bomb on um, things show. So no call, no calls this week. Oh. And depending on how I feel next week, no calls next week oh, either. Wow, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Call, go right ahead. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm glad to get in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because to call it before, it's something they're missing. I could recall the second prime minister. He kicked out his deputy, never gave us a reason, and drugs was rampant on the island before the individual who left St. Kitts and returned to St. Kitts, and there was a competition between them to control the drug market on St. Kitts. Election of 1993, it was tied. It ended up that... One, pa one party on Navy's won one seat, the other party won two seats. The party with the one seat joined with Palmer. And mm -hmm. the Governor General signed, went well, to sign them in. It took, it, we almost had a political warfare and saying it, you know. It took the four seasons accord to settle that riot. That was, we had battle and stone trying left, right, and center, and all kind of things. Other incidents took place. I would not mention them on the radio, as I mentioned. If it had it not been for the Four Seasons Accord, the Governor General had no right to go straight in five in a, in the, in the, in the part, to be the ruling administrator and I would have left six in opposition. Okay, but, but okay. <laughs> okay, but what does that have to do with what does that have to do with the crime? You know, because some deal, it's some deal. They mentioned about guns and all these things, right? You heard me mention a while ago certain things I cannot say on the radio. I would like to sit down and discuss with you and the okay. lady there. Okay. Okay. I cannot, and I am not at liberty. We understand. Okay, we're going to take another call. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to you. cycle through the calls. Call or go right ahead. Call or go right ahead. Go right ahead. Hi, good morning. Yeah. Um, you know, I have to completely agree with Siobhan. This message basically goes out to all the, the PAM, the Labour, the PLP, NRP, CCM zealots. Politicizing crime and intertwining it with religion undermines justice and fairness. It diverts attention from addressing root causes and finding real solutions instead of fostering division and prejudice. 
by blindly aligning with political and religious agendas, we overlook the complexities of social issues and fail to advocate for Amen. genuine change. It's hypocritical to claim moral superiority while exploiting crime and religion for partisan gain rather than seeking genuine progress and unity. We need to wake up and stop with the nonsense. Everybody calling in and all the Pam this, the Labour that and so forth, and nobody to Siobhan's point actually saying, where are the real social issues? Where are the real social issues and what are we doing to address it? Stop the nonsense. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And that's what I'm saying, Jamster. And you know, we have to understand, right? I'm of certain spiritual beliefs that what you focus on goes. And there are certain people out there, their job is to get you to focus on everything except yourself. Do not shine that light back upon self so you can analyze yourself. Everything the guy talk about, curses and all that. You know what curses? You're not looking at yourself. So you're not analyzing your actions and how your actions contribute exactly. to your life. Go ahead, caller. Good morning, Jamster. Yeah. Good morning to your other panel. Yes. Jamster, you yeah, have a very typical program and it's very interesting. And we have asked the question, how can we detail crime? And no one is coming up with the answer. And I want to know, from the policy part of it, do you all have a CV cameras so you all could detect where these um, multi-criminals coming from and these guns coming from? Does you all check those cameras that you all have put up and just have them there because you all want to put them up? Now, so I don't watch FBI and TV. And when I watch them, and see how they carry out the work day by day when they have it on a crime on the road. I want to know if these policemen here are trained to do the same. I think they should put some of the policemen to watch the FBI and other programs that come on TV and they see how they detail crime. But we are trying to see what we can do. And we want, I want to know, is those CV cameras is up? Just because they want to put them up, is they checking them? If they are checking them, come out and let us know where are they coming from. Have a good morning. Okay, call. And I'm yeah. so glad for that caller who called him before this one because this is this is the very point. There are certain people out there who hijack every conversation. Their mandate is to keep us separated. Is to keep us focusing everywhere except to where we need to look at, right? Politics is ruining St. Kitts. We had this whole discussion this morning. We are not discussing the mental health of our young people, how we can even tackle crime in realistic ways. You might see a man go down here, or somebody went and thief some food out, thief something out the Chinese. Oh, mm -hmm. we should lock them up. Nobody even looks at it and say, what? first of all, what did they thief? Who were they and why were they stealing? Because it might be somebody, maybe they have something against the Chinese and they decide they're going to do it. Or it might be somebody who's mm -hmm. genuinely hungry. We'd, crime has multiple reasons. And if we do not look at the reasons, how can and, we solve and, it? And I'm glad you brought that up because I was actually thinking about it about three minutes ago. Mm. We do not, we we don't seem to do things around here um, analytically and, no. and, and thinking critically. I'll give you an example. I remember months ago, um, on Traffic Talk, it came to my attention based on, you know, hearing traffic talk that I asked him, I said, well, don't you guys do any kind of, um, don't you guys do any kind of data gathering where you're looking for patterns and, and trying mm. to see why, for example, why does, okay, this particular spot is a hot spot for accidents. Mm -hmm. And it turns out they don't. You know what I'm telling you? People just ain't driving safe. I, I mean, it makes no sense. I remember uh, a CJ related a case where we're in uh, New York, um, mm -hmm. where in New York, um, apparently... There was an accident. An accident used accident used to happen in this area in New mm -hmm. York, like upstate New York, I think. Mm -hmm. And eventually they figured out it had something to do with the, the accident tended to happen during the winter when there was mm -hmm. ice on the street mm -hmm. and people tended to go into this particular tree. Mm -hmm. And eventually they did something because mm -hmm. they collected they collected evidence and data 
and they were looking for patterns and looking for other indicators that pointed to what the root cause is. That's not something we seem to do around here. It doesn't happen with traffic. No, a lot. And of it things. certainly doesn't happen with crime. And you know why it, it doesn't happen, clearly. with stuff? You see what I tell you about among a host of other um, indicators. Uh, every area know? of our mm. lives, because we're only used to the big stick. Remember, you know, and I keep telling them, we were once classified as non-humans. So even. We talk about we fighting for other races to look at us as humans, but do we even look at ourselves Selfless, as human exactly. beings? Exactly. We don't analyze and we don't try to correct behaviors. We only think about the punishment. And even when the gentleman spoke earlier about, you know, if it was Jamaica, they would have had a shootout. Has that solved the crime in Jamaica? We only can think about the big stick approach, the after. Punish them, punish them. But we never look at the cause. That is the purpose of what? what? What do you need a shootout for? I, I, I don't get it. Sometimes, sometimes... And the, the innocent citizens are the ones trapped in the some, middle. Some, sometimes we say things that make no sense to me. I don't know. Mm. Because that is how we, 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 yes. we look at things. And you see what is a fuel in a lot of this too. We look at American television, right? And even if you look at how... I don't know if people remember. A few years ago, every black person in an American film was a criminal. When they looked at the... The drug epidemic in the states, everybody was thugs and criminals and bad. And we somehow were tainted even with that image of ourselves. But and when we you really and we were glamorizing it yes, too. Yes, we do. But when you look at the, the history of it and you realize how the drugs were introduced, why these people are on drugs, the mental health um, studies that they did afterwards. You know, Ronald Reagan had a lot to do with that. Of, of course, but we don't see that. We don't see how influences and other things affect this, th us. This guy, this guy actually, this guy set out to, they actually came up with crack mm -hmm. to, 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 to decimate the black population. Okay. This guy, I mean. And you know what anyway. they're doing it in now? Food. For instance, yeah. there are multiple studies. We out there and a lot of us, I'm going to say, we feed with children like little pigs, right? You're going to a shop, you don't even know what the product is. These artificial colors and all these things have been proven to cause hyperactive and violent behavior. I was watching a documentary with a woman, a, a white lady and her son. And he told her when she, she couldn't figure out why her son was spiraling into this depression. And he telling her he's so unhappy he wanted to kill himself. And only when to study in the child, they found out every time he ate artificial colors if he ate the blue he became sad if he ate this color he became enraged and people think these things are magic are somehow the brain has a composition and chemicals affect our brains in different mm -hmm. ways and if you're gonna tell a parent don't give your son that it will make him hyper it will make him more prone to a certain type of behavior <laughs> you think too much and we're not thinking we're not, enough. Not thinking enough, exactly. I was just about Instead, to say. somebody gonna tell her, "The study she just buck him in when he do wrong." This is the kind <laughs> of mentality we have. <laughs> and then we ask ourselves, growing up, I used to see some of these old people. They were so wicked. When I say wicked, the things they would do. When you hear them talk about what they used to do to one another, sit down with some old people and they would tell you, "Bye." This person drugged three people. This person used to cut this person every night and she couldn't say nothing. The kind of things that happened in our history, they just they had no gun. And they didn't have any phones and all this stuff. To, yeah. But instead of and looking at ourselves so think, as a yeah. people and why, why would a young man, a guy said a few years ago, he heard a conversation between, so you know what I said? One as one gone, one born. And a lot of them, and every time we share these pictures, somebody gets shot and we share the picture it wasn't like a pig who get butchered on the road with all the blood running. We don't understand. We're desensitizing ourselves again. Thank uh, you. The, the, the black bodies, the death and the degradation has been so rampant and it is used on us psychologically. And we don't understand from when they started hanging up the black men in trees. You know what that does? If you want a monkey to stay off your land, the only thing that keeps monkey in the place is when you hang up one the dead psychologically it instills a level of fear but it also makes us listen so, um it was nice that you could join us today uh, thank you for having you know, me hopefully you'll be back someday this week right yes hopefully if you guys have me okay <laughs> all right we're always happy to have you and i'm sure the listeners are always happy to have you too um uh, folks uh that's gonna do it for today um uh island tea we're gonna be back tomorrow at eight o'clock and and hopefully the great Chevrolet will join us someday this week. And don't forget, she will be, um, you'll be hearing a little, I'm not going to say much, say less. <laughs> but you'll be hearing a little bit more of her very soon.
yes, I'm gonna be cryptic and and suspenseful like that. <laughs> suspenseful like that. Um, you're gonna be hearing a little bit more of her. So, um, yeah, more Thank of the same is is more of the same is welcome in this case when it comes to Chevrolet. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's gonna do it for today, folks. Bye. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> okay.